This is the intro to Long Hair Pretty Nail Show. Yeah. Hey y'all, it's Evie and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm just gonna be doing some Valentine inspired nails. I am getting a little tired of the kits. I know you guys love them and y'all wanna know which kit, want me to try this and try that, but I need a break for my creativity, okay? I cannot get too creative with all those kits because People get mad when I start using other products. They're like, why are you using that? They don't come with the kit. Uh, <laughs> I want to create. So I want to do some cute Valentine's Day inspired nails. And I thought that I will also add a Q&A. If you guys follow me on Instagram or if you saw my post here on YouTube, I told you guys to ask me some questions and I'm going to do a Q&A along with doing some Valentine's Day nails. So let's get to it. All right, so first I need to go pick out everything that I'm gonna use. So let me go over to my wall over here. All right, so we have, hmm, I think I'm gonna use this red one right here. I wanna use red, definitely. And this is Glam and Goods, Pucker Up. I need a nail bed color. So I think I'm gonna go with this one. I want something a little bright and I think that'd be cute. This one is called Heartbreaker. Okay, so now I need some glitter. Hmm, we're gonna go for this red one here. The Kiara Sky. And this one, I use this one a lot because it's so cute. It is called Queen of Hearts. We're gonna swing over here, grabbing some more glitter. Um, I haven't decided. I think I wanna use this red. It doesn't have like gold flakes in it. This one is called On Point. What? Oh, on point setters. <laughs> That's cute. All right, so that one. And I think I want to do a holographic, maybe. I don't know. But we're going to pick this one up, too. Free the hollow. <laughs> all right. All right, so we got all of that picked out. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do my nail prep. So I have already removed my previous nail design. My nails go out pretty good, actually. I'm gonna use a cuticle pusher and we're gonna push back these cuticles. So I guess I will just start the Q&A like throughout the process, so you know. And it's not gonna be in any particular order. I just asked you guys on a Instagram post and on YouTube, so I'm just gonna go back and forth between you know each post and answer questions so they're not going to be in any type of order i don't know it was a lot of responses that came in and uh yeah i don't i didn't read through the questions so we're just gonna see which i want to know <laughs> okay so first question is are you good or best friends with any nail tubers i wouldn't say i'm like friends i mean you know i know like I talk with Femi, I talk with Emily, um, but we haven't really like hung out like that. So I wouldn't say we're just like good friends, but I know people, I, I know other nail tubers. So taking the opposite end, we're just going to scrape up any of that dead skin. All right. So next question is, what is your favorite out of all the nail designs you did? Hmm. That is a tough one because I've done a lot. Like, I think I have over 700 videos on this channel. It's been going a while. Um, I would say my favorite would have to be my um, gender reveal nails. I had so much fun creating those, even though it took forever, but I really, really liked how those turned out. So next I'm gonna take my nail clipper and trim these down. I know y'all hate when I cut my nails, but I have to do it, okay? Like, don't really care too much for my natural nails. <laughs> so next question is, tell us the difference between your three pregnancies. Okay, <laughs> y'all go in there. <laughs> I would say there was a big difference between all of my pregnancies. Like, if y'all don't know, I have three children and each pregnancy was quite different <laughs> my first pregnancy was uh when i was 16. yes i had my daughter when i was 16 years old i was a teen mom and it was 
it was difficult. <laughs> but that pregnancy was different because it was my first pregnancy and I didn't know what was going on. Everything was scary. And she was a preemie. She was born at 27 weeks. She was two pounds, four ounces. At the time, I didn't understand how miracle worthy that was because I later found out that a lot of babies that are born that early don't survive. So, you know, she's like my little miracle child. With my son, it was different. I, um, I think I was 25. I would say it was a little, I won't say easier, but I knew what to expect. But I had my own complications with that pregnancy as well. I had to get a cerclage because my cervix wasn't, you know, strong and it was just a mess. So, um, but you know, he was born healthy and everything turned out good with that. Although after I had him, I did suffer from um, postpartum depression and it was, that was my first time experiencing that. So that was kind of different. And with this last pregnancy, I was 33. And uh, this pregnancy was so different from the rest. Oh my God. I didn't share every little thing because I just was dealing with it. But I suffered through like so much on the medical side of it. I guess because I was much older than, you know, previous pregnancies. And the older you get, the more risk, you know, but I had gestational diabetes. I had to check my blood sugar four times a day. I had to cut out all carbs. Like, oh my God, it was just a mess. Like that pregnancy was, was a doozy. So I think I'll be done for now. <laughs> all right, so we got the nail prep out of the way. Um, I do kind of want to check to make sure this is the cover that I want to use. Um, just to make sure I have this design in my head and I want it to turn out like it's in my head. <laughs> so let me just watch these right quick to make sure this is what I really want. For my acrylic, I'm going to use my number 8 or I may use my number 10. Yeah, scratch that. I'm going to use my number 10 just so we can make this go faster. So, yeah, I'm just going to swatch this real quick. I'm using the Kiara Sky monomer. I'm just going to put a little bit in here. All right, let's see if this, if these are what I even want to use. Yeah, I think I like that because this is going to be a Valentine's set. So I want it to be like really kind of, oh, okay. Yeah, I like that red. How long have you been doing nails? <laughs> you guys always ask this when it's a q and A. I have been painting my nails like with just nail polish and stuff since middle school. So since I was like 13, 14. I've been doing acrylics. I wanna say I was probably like 20 is when I first started. I'm 34 now, so y'all do the math. <laughs> All right, so for this nail design, I am gonna be using some nail forms. I just really like nail forms and I feel like when I use them, I'm more creative. How do you keep your nails healthy? I don't do anything special, honestly. I just make sure to not overfile my natural nails. Like when y'all see me, taking the shine off. I am not rough at all. And when I'm doing the e-file, I make sure to not put too much pressure and dig into my nails. I don't do any of that. And when it's time to take the nails off, I always, always soak off my nails. <laughs> I never rip them off. I never bite them off. I never pull them off. None of that. I always soak my nails off. All right. So next question. When you were little, the nails interest you. Where did you think your interest in nails came from? When I was little, yes, I was into nails. I used to go with my mom to get her nails done. And um, I think I was in like fifth grade or something. And um, I used to get like a little airbrush E on my nails. Like that was like, oh, I got my nails done. Like that was like... <laughs> It was so nice, but yeah, I liked getting my nails done for a very, very long time. I've always liked nails. My mom wore long nails and we used to go get our nails done together. Nails have just been life, okay. 
<laughs> All right, so we got the nail forms on. So I need a primer. What did I do with it? I'm gonna use the, uh, no, you know what? I'm not, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the uh, Jelly Tips uh, Prep and Primer. Only because this one is just, it's not bad. It's just a different consistency and it, it's a little more wet than what I'm used to. <laughs> All right, so next question. If you didn't do nails, what would you be doing? I've always kind of liked fashion, so I don't know, something within that. My life before YouTube, I was a pharmacy tech, but I hated doing that. So we just gonna place that B there. Ooh. I've missed acrylic, I must say. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm gonna do a little French and I will crispen this up with a uh, hand file afterwards because I can never get it just perfect. It has been a while since I used the Glam and Glitz. Well, since I've used any of my products I get on my wall. <laughs> it's like kids have taken over and then I'm gonna just work my way back. I don't try to rush it, like. Ooh, but I do love how this is giving me enough time to work with it. a big B, but that's okay. <laughs> she thick, but I can fix that with filing. I just need to make sure I got enough to work with. All right, so the next question. Hmm. Ooh, this is a good one. This is from Taylor, Be Glamorous Nails, if you guys don't know. But she says, how do you get brands to respect your collaboration price that is fair and worth your talent? Ooh. That has been something I have been fighting for a long time. <laughs> These brands do not care. They do not want to pay. They want to send you free products. They want you to make a whole dedicated video and then they want you to put an affiliate link and you get five, 10% of sales. Like, I don't work for y'all. Y'all gotta pay for the production of your, of this video. Like. <laughs> I don't understand how I've been fighting it or how I have stood up for myself is that be willing to walk away. Like I've turned down 99.7% of all the brand deals that come in my email because it's just not right. Like they don't want to pay. I have to hear how they don't have a budget and all this and all that, but mm -mm -mm. <laughs> All these other creators in different niches with the same, you know, crowd numbers, the sameness. They, hey, it's money out here. It's money out here, okay? I'm not gonna go all into detail because people don't like when you talk about money. But in 2020, my channel, from all of my affiliate links and everything, I referred over $4 million in sales in 2020. And I didn't get $4 million. <laughs> I got a slither of a fraction of that. So that goes to show you that, you know, no, you really got to stand up for yourself. You have to show that, hey, I do this. I do this numbers. I have this many, you know, nail people following me, or I have this specific niche of people. Like you have to show them, tell them. And even if you do that, they don't care. Like, I've sent people all of my stats, all of my media kits, and you just gotta stand firm. Like, brands still don't respect my price. That's why I don't do many sponsorships or anything like that, because they play it. <laughs> like, I don't, I'm not working for free. Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, nails especially, like, we kinda get, you know, the 
not so good end of the stick <laughs> over here. They don't they don't take it seriously, but it's these these companies are making serious money off of us. Yeah, I like I said to this day I still have to tell them why I'm charging what I'm charging. It's like mm -mm. I don't have anything that's gonna help because I'm fighting the same issues. <laughs> I say you know forget about them. That's pretty much what I've done. I've just got creative with ways to generate income where I don't have to depend on brands because they flaky. Nobody cares about you until you get numbers. I used to reach out to so many brands and I would just send proposals all day long. I remember being at work <laughs> typing out like trying to beg these companies like please let me show y'all. Nobody wasn't hearing it. But once my channel blew up in 2019, oh my God, the floodgates opened. Everybody wanted to be on my channel. Everybody wanted to send me stuff. Everybody, everybody, everybody. That's just how it is. Like, unfortunately, it's a, it's a numbers game. You ain't gonna get no respect until you got the numbers. And even after you get the numbers, you ain't gonna get no respect. <laughs> I know it's sound doom and gloom, but I'm telling y'all, like, I thought it was gonna be easier once I got to a million subs here on the channel, but no, nothing's really changed. They still kinda, they're like, okay, you wanna, can you do these, this review and I send you the product? Next question is, how long on average does it take you to do your nails? I don't time myself, y'all. It takes me a long time time especially because i'm filming as well this is probably going to take me four hours like no joke but that's okay i see this as like a form of therapy i like being alone with my creativity so i don't try to be the fastest because it's just me i only do my own nails i could be slow <laughs> Do you do clients? I've already answered that. No, I don't. <laughs> I am not a nail tech. I'm not licensed. I only do my own nails. Let's see. What's your sign? I am a Leo. What did you do before you became a nail YouTuber? I kind of sort of answered that, but I'll go into more detail. I used to be a certified pharmacy technician and I worked at Kroger Pharmacy for like seven years. <laughs> and then I worked at an insurance company as a pharmacy tech. And I did that pretty much up until I quit <laughs> to do YouTube. <laughs> but yeah, that's a, that's another story. But yeah, I was a pharmacy tech. That's what I did. And I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. Um, I chose pharmacy tech because I wanted to be in the medical field, but I did want to like deal with blood and stuff. And that was one of the options. I, I went and did that. And you know, it was all right. I was, well, I worked as a pharmacy tech for like 12 years, but mm, the pay was low and I didn't like it. <laughs> That was my time working in retail and, you know, dealing with customers and stuff. And oh my God, the public can be so mean. That is probably the main reason why I do not want to do people nails for a living because I, I cannot, I cannot deal. <laughs> I cannot deal with the public. Sometimes I would just like go home, be mad, be ready to cry. Wish I can quit, but I can't because the rent due. But yeah, I was a pharmacy tech. <laughs> All right, so next question is, how did you get started in the nail YouTube community? Did you start filming on your phone? How did you grow your audience? Who was your first sponsor? How many times a week did you post? Dang! Okay, JC wanna know it all. <laughs> A little backstory about my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel was originally about my hair journey. I was really into healthy hair, you know, trying to style my hair, trying to grow my hair. So that is what I was focused on when I started this channel back in 2007. 
I am old. The girl wouldn't get no type of views. Only had like 700 subs. <laughs> like if I could find screenshots, I would definitely show y'all. But yeah, this channel was not popping at all. I wanted to start posting more. Between hair videos, I would upload makeup and nails. And then I noticed that the nail videos were doing way better than any of the other content that I posted. And um, I was a little stubborn. Like I was like, this is a hair channel. <laughs> I am not about to do nails. And um, you know, when the audience tells you what they want, you do it. <laughs> so that is what happened. This turned into a nail channel. So that is how I got into the nail community. Okay, so then the next part of your question is, oh, did you start filming on your phone? No, because at the time I didn't have a good phone. Like we talking about like 2014, like I didn't have a good phone. <laughs> but my husband um, at the time he was working as a videographer. So he had camera equipment. I think the first couple videos, we kind of set up the uh, DSLR, but it was hard because if y'all know anything about cameras, um, those type of cameras, you have to kind of stay in one spot or it gets blurry. <laughs> so like that didn't work out well. I would like go on QVC and find the best camera I could afford on Easy Pay, and that was what I would use. It'd be like little Nikon kind of point and shoots. I think that's what you call, I don't know, but they were not really good cameras. <laughs> but yeah, I would sit them up and some of the earlier videos are really cringy to watch because they were bad. But yeah, I didn't start on my phone. I did start on like the, the most expensive camera I could afford at the time, which was like two, $300 camera. <laughs> it says, how did you grow your audience? There is not really a, you know, secret to that. Honestly, you just gotta post different stuff and whatever has the most views and whatever whatever people like, that's what I did. When this channel started blowing up, it was because I was reviewing nail products. And at the time, there was nobody doing nail kits. There wasn't anybody who was like doing poly gel, acrylic, dip powder. Like there was nobody like doing that. I pretty much kind of filled a void at the time. Like people were curious about nail products and you know, that's kind of really what blew this channel up is nail kits. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's pretty much how I grew my audience. It's just pretty much diving in, digging into what people were watching um, and taking advantage of the opportunity. So when I saw that people like nail kits, I just kind of went in and started doing nail kits. And now, as you can see, everybody review products now. <laughs> Who was your first sponsor? Um, like I said, I was on um, this platform called FameBit. I did a few brand deals off of there. I mean, they were like small. I think the most I got paid at the time was like a hundred dollars. Like it was, it was pennies. First nail sponsor. Are we talking about like first time someone gave me some money? <laughs> because they send free products way before they give you money. Um, the first time that I was actually paid. So my first sponsor, I think it was McCart. Yeah, I think they were the first ones to pay me to do a video. And I think that was in like 2018. So from 2007 to 2018, there was no nail money, okay? None. Well, not from, you know, brands. You gotta, you gotta make your own money. Final question is how many times a week did you post? So when I was first trying to get this channel started, like really taking it seriously, I was doing twice a week. And that was hard. Like I would film and do my nails, take them off and then do them again. And it was like, oh man, it was awful. I was trying to get videos out faster and faster. So that's when I started only doing one hand. And man, yeah. So at the, so when I was really trying to amp, like really trying to get the channel going, I was doing twice a week. And honestly, for nail content, like that was pretty hard because a lot goes into nail videos. You have to edit them. You got to do the nails and then you got to edit. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I couldn't 
Like it's it's so different from just sitting in front of the camera and talking. Uh, when you're actually doing something, like the videos take a lot. I would just say, you know, don't feel pressure to post more. Just make sure what you are posting is quality content. What other hobbies do you have besides nails? Shopping. <laughs> I do way too much shopping. Nails have always been my hobby. Like when I would when I was working as a pharmacy tech, I would do my nails and that would be like the talk of the day. Be like, oh, let me see your nails. And I remember the pharmacist I used to work with, she'll be like, you need to do something in nails. I was like, I don't want to be a nail tech. And who would have thought? <laughs> I don't really do anything else besides the family. And then this, this used to be a hobby, but now it's a job, but I still like doing it. So I guess you could say, you know, it's still a hobby. <laughs> How do you balance your YouTube life with family life? Is it hard for you to find time for yourself or you can do your nails since life is crazy nowadays? I don't really talk about my personal life, but because, you know, I'm grateful for everything. I don't want to complain. I don't want to come off like I'm ungrateful. But yeah, life is so hectic right now, like especially with a baby. I don't balance well. Like I, I really don't. Since having Maya, you know, she runs the show for right now. Like I have to really cater to her. So that's kind of why I haven't been posting as much as I would like to, because when I used to have that chunk to film, that chunk of time to film, you know, I would do that consistently. And you know, the older kids, they can take care of themselves. But now that I have a little baby, I can't really disappear for that long. And I don't have any say so of when I could disappear. So that is, you know, but as she gets older and gets more independent, then, you know, it'll, it'll get better. I just remind myself that this is the life that I worked really hard for. I worked really, really hard to, do, <laughs> to be able to do what I love for a living. So... You know, I'm really, really happy, even though, you know, it gets rough and I'm tired and I stay up all night editing. <laughs> um, I wouldn't change it because I hated my nine to five. I was not happy. <laughs> so, yeah, life gets crazy, but I am I am really grateful. Would you ever consider getting licensed or do you prefer self-taught is the way to go? For me, I won't go and get a license because I'm not trying to do other people's nails. I only do my nails. I only do my nails. <laughs> when you start to do other people's nails, you get into that liability aspect of it. So I definitely recommend you go to school, get your license. If you're trying to do this as a business and do other people's nails, you need to be licensed. Um, but as for me, this is just... I can mess up my own nails. I can't sue myself. <laughs> All right, so we got this little baby here. I think I'm uh, I'm gonna actually take off this nail form. It's gonna be a little easier for me to. All right, yeah. Speaking of the baby, can y'all see her banging her head against the pillow? Ooh, let me change her baby monitor. I love this thing, and no, this isn't sponsored. Pay for this. <laughs> but yeah, we got Maya's nightlight and I can change to like twinkle twinkle little star and then we're going to turn that up a bit to 20%. Let me see y'all can hear it. I'm going to turn it down so we won't hear that in the video. <laughs> Hopefully that will keep her quiet because I am like, this is what I'll be talking about. Like I like to sit down in one go and do my nails and I, I can't seem to do that. I would like to get it done like all tonight and not have to start again tomorrow. But yeah, I'm just going to file around the smile line and make this nice and crisp. And then I'm going to put a nail form back on. All right, so next question is, are you done with vlog? Oh, this is a load. Y'all got these loaded questions. Okay, so that one says, 
Are you done with vlogs? Have any further plans to expand your business, channel, and or family? What? <laughs> okay, so am I done with vlogs? I wouldn't say I'm officially done with them, but they're just not my thing. I don't know. I'm so kind of private when it comes to my personal life that, I don't know, vlogs just seem so like invasive. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. But you know, they're fun to share moments here and there, but I don't know. I just can't get back into it. Any plans to expand my business? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> of course, like, I don't plan to do videos forever, so of course I'm expanding. Okay, so let me go in with this glitter. I hope this works out. I'm not pre-mixing. I'm just picking up a bead of clear and then a bead of, and then dipping it into the glitter. And that's how I'm picking it up. It's the quickest. Then I kind of just smush some more glitter in there. Um, But yeah, I kind of want to do like, a layered French type look. So we gonna push this all the way back. This is what I do miss is being creative. I know when I was doing a lot of kits, everybody was like, I know, like, can you not do kits? But unfortunately, the way that YouTube and the algorithm works is you have to keep making more of what people are watching <laughs> for your channel to grow. So although kits weren't my favorite, it was what was hot at the time. So and, you know, I did a question, I think not too long ago, asking you guys which I wanted to see more on my channel. And a lot of you were saying how y'all were tired of kits. So if y'all really tired of kits, y'all need to make sure that y'all watching these videos as well. Otherwise, I gotta just keep on doing kits. <laughs> uh, Abby says, haven't heard much about your son. Does he do any extracurriculars like big sis? But yes, my son is eight. He is autistic, nonverbal. He, it's, it's, you know, it's challenging, um, I, to say the least. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't um, speak much. Um, he was actually completely nonverbal up until about two years ago is when he first started like grunting and like saying sounds. Now he's able to say like three letter sentences. Like he says, I want juice or I want chicken. Like he can tell us what, you know, his favorite foods and stuff. Yeah, it's a slow process. I don't post about him much because for one, if anybody knows like autistic kids, <laughs> I don't know, but they, it's impossible to like get him to sit still for more than five seconds to take a picture. Like, I mean, he's gotten better, but ooh, for a long time, he was just like, I couldn't, I couldn't capture him. <laughs> and also from being on the internet, as long as I have, I know that everybody here that um, follows me, like on YouTube, on Instagram, everyone isn't nice. <laughs> and having a special needs child, like I'm really protective over him. And I just don't want to have to keep explaining like, oh, why is he sitting like that? Why is he waving his hands like that? You know, why doesn't he speak? And it's, you know, people can be kind of mean. And I just want to shelter him from that. Like, my kids didn't ask for this YouTube life. Like me and my husband, we choose to share bits of our life and do this as a living, you know, this is our choice. The children, like they don't want to be a part of this. So, <laughs> Except for Maya. Maya is like, she is our, you know, photogenic camera baby. So I'm pretty sure she probably want to be a part of some YouTube videos when she gets older. Cause yeah, <laughs> but yeah, MJ, he's our sweetheart and um, I'm very protective over him. So I, I, I kind of just let him be a kid. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna go in with some of this red. Let me drain this a little bit. And I'm going to use this to form the tip. Okay. <laughs> that is the thing about like using different products is you have to know you have to get used to all these different products so that one 
I used a little bit too much monomer. But yeah, I'm just going to build this up. Hopefully this turn out somewhat cute. <laughs> I really don't know what I'm going for. Oh, that's going to be cute. That's going to be cute. <laughs> okay, so this time we're going to drain the liquid out of that bead. And we're going to put this right here. Okay, yeah, that's much better. Yeah, one thing I definitely learned that all these products may be the same, but they're not the same. Like everything has a different formulation. So you have to work, you have to learn each product. All right, so next question says, as a beginner, how long did it take you to become an awesome nail tech that you are today? Uh, well, one correction is I'm not a nail tech. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a lot of practice. When I first decided to do acrylics, it was hard. Like I remember going into Sally's and getting the only acrylic at the time that you can get without a license because that's what I dealt with like back in 2014. Like it wasn't easy to get products like this. But yeah, uh, it was hard. Like that stuff was really hard to work with and it stink and I just wasn't good at it. And I got really discouraged that I stopped for a few years. And then I ended up picking it back up. Once I started taking it seriously, I felt like it took me a good two years to finally get my nails to the point where I liked them. So it just, it takes practice. And it took me longer because it wasn't that many videos for me to reference because at the time it wasn't really that many people on here teaching you how to do nails. I was a big fan of uh, Tammy Taylor's channel and Nail Nails because they really went into detail to show you like, this is how you do it. And so straight up to get to like, beginner couldn't pick up a bead to decent nails that I really liked and that I can really recreate stuff and be good. <laughs> um, I wanna say it probably took me a good two years. Would you ever be a celebrity nail tech? If you were to get a chance, which celebrity would you like to work with? No, I wouldn't want to be a celebrity nail tech, honestly. <laughs> Especially like now, I'm not licensed, so I don't want the liability of working on somebody and then not. Nah. Mm -mm. <laughs> so no, I don't want to be a celebrity nail tech because that's kind of just, you know, it sounds nice, but for what, from what I'm hearing on Instagram from some of the nail techs that I follow is that celebrities don't pay. Like they just want you to do their nails and their hair and then you may get a mention on their page. <laughs> like I don't, mm -mm. that doesn't excite me at all. All right, so I just went ahead and put a little bit of clear over this. Yeah, it looks crazy now, but I promise you, once I file it, it's gonna look so much better. What is your favorite gel polish company? My favorite gel polishes are from Madam Glam. To me, they have the most pigmented colors. They, you know, they are pricey, but I really think it's worth it. I like to use those colors as like nail art paint and it works really, really well. A lot of people always ask this, but can you do your daughter's nails? No. <laughs> And it's not because I don't want to. It's because she plays the violin and she likes her nails really short. She doesn't really like the gel polish or any paint on them because she used her nails and her fingers to press down on the strings. And so the nail polish chips and she doesn't like it chipping. And so, so yeah, it's a no. But I did tell her that you gonna get your nails done for prom and for graduation and you gonna be in the video. So she already knows that, but that's the reason why I don't do her nails is because she is a violinist. And that's my oldest daughter, by the way. <laughs> it's so weird when, cause I'm, I've been saying my daughter for so long cause I don't, I've, I've only had one. <laughs> so now having two, it's like, I'm talking about the oldest. Someone asks, um, 
have you ever done long acrylic nails on your husband? Y'all, I have been trying for years. He ain't going for it, okay? The most he will let me do is polish them with nail polish. Do you have any advice for new content creators, especially those in beauty? I would say if you really want to get into doing this, that you honestly just have to love it because if you're doing it for the money, the money don't come for a long time, if it ever comes. <laughs> you really kind of have to enjoy doing it. And if you're having fun, it really has to just be something you like doing because it is a labor of love. You're gonna be doing a lot of work for no money. I would just say, you know, that be the number one thing. Love it. Love what you do because you're gonna have to do it over and over and over again. And if you don't, if you're just faking it, your audience is gonna be able to tell and your energy ain't gonna be there. Like, people know. So, don't think too much about what to post and when to post, like just do it. Like these social media platforms now, they just they just want content. They like hungry, hungry hippos, more, more, and more. So the more you just get your content out there, make sure it's quality. Like these phones are nice. <laughs> So as long as you have good lighting and all that, you'll be fine. But but yeah, just as long as you're having fun, you're having some decent, good quality content. And, um, you know, just, just have fun. Social media is about, you know, connecting with people. It's about people. <laughs> My advice, just starting off, like, just have fun. Because you got a long way to go. All right, so next question is, did you go to college? If so, what was your major? That is kind of a complicated question. So, well, I I think I shared this in the Instagram post, but I didn't, you know, I never shared it on my YouTube channel. But um, as I told y'all that I had my daughter when I was 16, so I dropped out of high school and I got my GED and I went to pharmacy tech school, or which was like a, tech, a technical college. It was only like a, I think an eight or nine month course. The following year, I went to community college and I was just, it was something vague, like biology or something, I don't know. It was because, you know, I hated my job and I was like, I wanna make more money. So I went to college, but I didn't finish, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a waste of money that I'm still paying back. But um, but yeah, that's the story on that. So no, I didn't like, I don't have any degrees or anything like that. I just have my pharmacy technician diploma. And uh, I guess, you know, if this YouTube stuff don't work out, I can always go back to being a pharmacy tech. <laughs> Let's see, out of all the nail shapes you have done, what is your favorite? Duh, coffin. <laughs> coffin shape is my shape. I know y'all get tired of saying it, but like if y'all follow nail techs on Instagram or whatever, like people got they got they shape that they mastered or that they like their nails and their hands to have. And that's kind of just where I'm at. I like coffin. All right, so we got the nail forms just chilling, setting. Um, I mean the thumb, oh, don't dry. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take these off. And while I do that, let's go with the next question. How often do you do your nails and does it hurt digging in the nail bed to clean them? I'm guessing you mean like the cuticle bit. Um, so no, that doesn't hurt because like I said, I don't do any excessive digging or anything like that on my natural nails because we ain't trying to be, no. <laughs> um, and I do my nails. I used to do them more before the baby, <laughs> but I try to do them once a week. So I, I do each hand once a week. And if y'all missed this design, this was my test to see which poly gel was the clearest. And as y'all can see, these nails are still holding up. All right, this is what the nails are looking like. Oh God, they look crazy. They always look crazy before you file them when you do a nail form. So 
that is one thing I learned when I was learning to do my nails was everything can be fixed with filing, <laughs> no matter what. All right, so I just wanna make sure I'm cleaning my brush, just making sure all of the product is out. And then uh, I think I'm gonna use, I don't know. No, I don't need to use this again. All right, so yeah, I just kinda, well first, I'm sorry. Let me go back and make sure I'm really getting everything out. Okay, yeah, that feels like it. And I just kind of twirl it. To where we got us a nice little point. And then I just put my cap back on. And voila. So yeah, this was my size 10 acrylic brush so if y'all want that go check it out on my website longhairprettynails.com so yeah that is a shameless plug <laughs> and that is one of the ways that i generate income is that i sell products on my website why not i recommend other brands products and i recommend mine as well <laughs> why send the money all the way uh, what is the brand of your nail dust collector? I think I answered that in my last video, but it's the Valentino nail dust collector. Uh, do you have a job outside of YouTube? No, this is my job. <laughs> this is how I feed my babies. Okay, so I'm going to take this hand file and we just going to start with this first. And then I'm going to switch over to the... Uh, e-file once I I typically like to do majority of my filing with the hand file but this go get a little loud because when I'm working with acrylic I need to use a dust collector but uh, yeah <laughs> Whew. all right so filing and shaping is done and this is what I'm working with so far. So now we get to have some fun. I am such a huge fan of Queen of Nails. She does like some amazing art, like. <laughs> but I love how she has like the cherries, but they're heart shaped. And then this one is another one of hers. And oh my God. The artwork is just superb. I've been a fan of hers for so long. I want to do something like this, but in like 3D form. So wish me luck. <laughs> Would you ever create your own brand of poly gel or acrylic? I may have some things in the works. I may not. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully make sure this comes out right. So I want to do like... Mm -hmm. Did I drain that enough? All right, so we got that on there. We have the, uh, I want it to really look like a heart. But I also like how uh, Queen, Queen of Nails, she has, when she does her cherries, they have like, they like drip. So I think I'm gonna do something like that. But, like I said, I want to make sure that you can tell that this is a heart. Okay, that is workable. No. <laughs> so I'm going to go in with a little smaller bead, and I just want to make this look three-dimensional. I want it to look puffy. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm going to put the second one, like, right here. Oh, that one's big. Okay, I should have drained that a little bit. Okay, now, we're going to start over. I, I did too much on this. <laughs> this is too much. Okay, so we're going to work with a B like that size. And I'm gonna make sure to drain out the liquids. And then we're gonna place it on the nail. Mm. 
But like I said, I wanted this to overlap a little bit. Okay, and we're just gonna go on this side. And kind of let this set a little bit. Kind of smooth this over. I'm gonna finish like that's gonna it's gonna be neat. <laughs> brush got a good point on it. We're just gonna dig into that like that. And uh yeah. We just gonna go with it. It's a little dry. Let me add a little bit more moisture to this. Yeah, this color was perfect because that other green was way too bright. So yeah, what I'm gonna do here is just oh, work this where it needs to go. Trying to get like a really nice thin strip. And for this, I may need a bigger brush. Yeah, I'm gonna start over y'all. And I practice, so. These are not, this is not with professionals. <laughs> you know, this is not gonna be perfect. I am a DIYer. Okay, that's better. All right, so now I'm gonna take this and we just gonna work this little stem. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a second bead of the green. Oh, this green is pretty, it has a little shimmer to it. Oh, try to do something and make this look like a cherry stem. <laughs> I'm just going to add a little bee right here. This can be like the stem. Um, you know, the little top of it. <laughs> Whatever you call it. After how long did you start seeing results on YouTube about your videos? I just started mine. Okay, so I think they're saying like, how long it, it take for you to start seeing results on YouTube? <laughs> I can't even put, you can't put a timeline on it. Like, you kind of just have to, you know, put your content out there. Fulfill a need that's not being met, I guess. <laughs> and... I, like, I can't say that, oh, you're going to post a YouTube video and then, you know, in three months, your channel's going to take off. It could be three months. It can be three weeks. Who knows? <laughs> For me, it took a long time. Like, y'all may just start seeing my channel now, but I've been at this a long time. What they say, it takes 10 years to be an overnight success. <laughs> <laughs> this girl had a ton of questions. Okay. One of them was, what is your most challenging, frustrating nail design? i say the most challenging nail design was the noodle nails. Like, you got to be quick <laughs> with those. So, yeah, those were really, really challenging. Those are probably the hardest ones that I've done. So, I was in the middle of talking and... My memory cards are full. I don't think I've ever filled up a memory card while I was filming my nails, but I guess the Q&A just kind of went over. So yeah, I am going to, um, it's late y'all. I think it is uh, 5, 5 a.m. I think. Um, so I'm gonna just go to bed and I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> All right, so it is the next day. We are back, okay? We are back to finish. <laughs> All right, so this is where we left off, you know? So yeah, since I had to stop, um, you know, some more questions came in overnight. So I will try to get to as many as those. 
Um, Cause towards the end um, from last night, some of those were kind of duplicate questions. Did you ever try to refill your already refilled nails? I guess they mean like refill, you know, or fill in the nails. Uh, I don't have anything against doing fill-ins. It's just that I like fresh nail sets every time. And just because I do my own nails, I can do that. But I know if you, you know, if you're paying and going somewhere, then that can be a little expensive to take your nails off every time. But that's just the way I like to do it, you know. Extend some bling gel down. And I'm gonna go over that with the top coat, of course. Um, also, if y'all know of any other like bling type of adhesives that y'all would like me to try, I'm open to it. I just don't really know like what's good, what's out there. I typically like the gel stuff, stuff that I can move around before it, you know. I don't really like glue because I'm indecisive of where I put my crystals while I'm placing them. This is all kind of just, you know, from the dome. <laughs> all right, so on YouTube, there was some juicy questions that came in overnight. As y'all could see, more comments came in, more questions came in, so. And they were getting a little juicy. So let's see what y'all, <laughs> what y'all wanna know. What made you decide to do your own nails or do you find that your long nails get in the way of life, especially kids? What kind of motivated me to do my own nails was because um, I was young with limited funds, when no funds, I was broke. <laughs> and I liked getting my nails done, I just couldn't afford it. So that is why I started to learn to do my own nails. I mean, you know, I like the art and all that stuff, but the main reason was because your girl couldn't afford to go get her nails done. And as far as does my long nails get in the way, yes, <laughs> they get in the way a lot. Um, but I've learned to live with them because this is just the lifestyle that I choose to live. <laughs> but yes, they do get in the way. All right, so I am gonna be using some of my nail crystals from the Nail Crystal Kit and also my little premium crystals here. These are the iridescent ones. And then this is the Moonlight crystal kit so I will leave a link down below if you guys are interested in that do you sell unwanted nail supplies I know a lot of people ask me what I do with all of my nail supplies and stuff like that but I don't typically I mean I'm not opposed to selling them or anything like that but I don't know it gets kind of dicey like I kind of open and like use the stuff so I feel weird like giving it to people <laughs> like it's used you know I I know everyone don't mind but I don't know I just feel like and these little hearts here are Swarovski's that I had in my collection I was like I need some red <laughs> but I'm seriously considering uh creating some long hair pretty nails red crystals because uh I I need some red in my life but anyway yeah, it's just like, it's a lot of kind of liabilities with, you know, selling stuff if it's not in like good condition and I don't know. It's just, it's a lot of liability stuff when you get to this level. But I have been trying to think, uh, me and hubby have been trying to think of ways to kind of do like maybe an auction or some type of giveaway, but even giveaways, y'all, like the reason why we stopped doing giveaways is because just so many rules and laws for different states. And it was just like, I ain't trying to get sued. So, you know, it's just, it's a whole new world now. So we have to kind of think of different ways to do stuff like that. But it's not that I'm hoarding everything. It's just that there isn't a easy way to do it without rules and laws and stuff like that. I'm gonna just go ahead and cure this because uh, it looked good enough to me. Next question. Oh, okay. <laughs> this one, this one right here. What do your husband do for work? Do you support him? Does he care for the kids and cook while you work? <laughs> so let me just, no, we're not going to do that. We are not going to do that. So I am the face of Long Hair Pretty Nails. But my husband, Marcus, 
He is the business brains. He's everything else. This is a business. So this is what we do to generate income for our family. <laughs> and so I do the nails. I film the content. I edit the content. Or if I don't feel like it, well, nowadays I do edit. But when I get burned out, then he'll edit. But he taught me how to edit. So that's how I know how to do that. He sets up all the camera equipment you see here. He takes care of our accounting because I don't, I don't know anything about that. He makes sure our taxes are paid. He negotiates with the companies to make sure that we're getting fair compensation. Like he does all the business stuff. So there is no, I'm supporting him or, you know, he's doing all the work or I'm doing all the work. We are a team, so there is no long hair pretty nails without me, and there's definitely not long hair pretty nails without Marcus. Like, <laughs> I even though I've been doing YouTube like way before I met him, he knew I was doing YouTube. I told him when we first met, and you know, it was kind of just like, oh, that's cool. I would ask him for help here and there, but it kind of wasn't really priority because he was working as a videographer, like doing all type of video work throughout the city. Um, he did music videos, commercials for like car dealerships and stuff like that. So he had his own biz going on. So when I'll be like, hey, could you help me? How do I do this? And he's like, oh, YouTube, eh. But <laughs> once the channel started like really, you know, uh, I'm gonna tell y'all, this channel started from the bottom. I remember when you, there is a hundred dollar threshold to get paid from Google AdSense. And for the longest, I did not hit that threshold. Like this channel was making like $2 a month. Like it was nothing. And then as it was slowly building up, it just get more and more. I got like $50 a month. And then once the channel started making like a thousand dollars a month, he was like, oh, well, let's see how we can, you know, get this to grow. And I kid you not, that year after he started helping me was the year that we made the most money that we've ever made in our lives. So don't play. <laughs> like, please do not disrespect my husband. Marcus is the brains of this. So I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> so this one says, I'm being nosy, but I like to know how you and your husband met and how you were able to become a team when it came to your brand, if that makes sense. As a girl who loves to do her own thing, I have a hard time expressing to my partners sometimes that I want their involvement in my brand, which isn't geared towards men. So yeah, I kind of touched on that with my last um, response, but as far as how me and Marcus met, we met, <laughs> it was one summer night in 2010. We kind of just met like downtown Nashville. Um, we were both out with our groups of friends and we was at a local lounge in the area and we met. And I walked up to him and was like, hey. And he said, hey. And we've been talking ever since. <laughs> um, but as far as expressing um, wanting involvement with your partner, that's kind of something that we, I wouldn't say we battled with, but obviously, you know, Marcus wasn't interested in, you know, nails. Like, <laughs> he's a man, okay? He don't care about this type of stuff. You know, the parts that does int in intrigue him is like, you know, the business side. Like, he loves all that analytical stuff, looking at the channel analytics to see how we can improve here and how can we improve there and, you know, how do we take advantage of the opportunities that we have. So that's his strength. So I say that if your partner has a strength, try to, you know, connect that somehow with what you're doing. So where it doesn't feel like he's doing a business that's, you know, about women or, you know, like if it's something that's just like involved and he feels like, you know, he can bring something that, you know, that's, that's his project to work on the piece of, you know, the business, then I feel like, you know, it can work, but you know, some men just ain't interested. So, <laughs> but I feel like real businessmen, like you can, you can get involved into anything. Like, honestly, 
the only thing that businessmen care about is money. So <laughs> um, as long as whatever you're doing is making money or have potential to make a lot of money, then he should be on board. Like that's how I was able to get my man over here. It's like, hey, <laughs> we can make some money. All right, so uh, this question says, uh, do you ever want to do other content but don't want to disappoint your fans? <laughs> that is the delicate balance of having a YouTube channel. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> you also, you know, you want to keep things fresh and you want to, you know, go outside the box sometimes, but you can't go too far outside the box because people will let you know and they'll be like, we don't like this. Or they will let you know by not watching. So, yeah. Sometimes I do want to do other types of content. Um, but for now, I am tied to nails. So, that's what we shall give you guys. Nails. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah. We've experimented on this channel, um, you know, over the years. And, yeah. It's hard to post other type of content when you have an audience that's there for one reason. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and line this. I wanna do just, you know, kind of camouflage my mistakes. I wish I could have just had it seamless, but better luck next time. I just wanna crispen this up. I don't want it, I don't want the gold to be too chunky. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and care. <laughs> All right, so let's see what other juicy questions y'all get. <laughs> All right, so this question is, how much do you charge per hand for reviews? <sighs> okay, so I'm gonna be straight up with y'all. Like, I know people hate like talking about money and stuff like that, but I figure, you know, y'all ask, so I'm gonna tell y'all. This isn't new. Like, if you do your research, you know that people get paid a lot of money to do YouTube reviews and work with brands and collaborations and stuff like that. So, we have a range here on the channel depending on what the brand wants and yada yada. But the range that, you know, we're in, the range that we charge for our services on this channel is... 10 to 20,000 per video. Yes. <laughs> so, and that I didn't just pull the numbers out of the sky. That is actually kind of low for what you get here. Like, <laughs> this is Social Blue Book. This is how creators can um, see how much they should charge for various platforms and stuff like that. Since my main platform is YouTube, that is basically what. I do, I don't do dedicated videos for any other platform. YouTube is what I do because this is where I sit and do all my videos. So Social Blue Book does tell you what you should be charging, like a range of what you should be charging. And that is just a starting point. It doesn't mean that that's what you have to charge, but that is where you know I try to stay because that is fair compensation for what you're getting. You're getting a review video that is going to stay up indefinitely on this channel and you're constantly getting views like it's not just a 30-day thing like i'm getting i'm referring sales from videos that i've done three years ago so these companies are still getting revenue still getting views still getting eyes on their products for stuff you know because i keep the videos up so that is what the going rate is. I want to do like some hand drawn type of a uh, um, lips on this nail. And what I'm gonna do first is put top coat on. So, cause I want to do like the uh, glitter sugar lips on this one. But since I am doing the glitter nail, last time I forgot to put top coat on the base before I did the glitter, so. We're not going to forget to do that this time. Shantae wants to know, am I going to do live videos anymore? I am. I promise y'all I am going to do live videos. It's just that I underestimated how needy <laughs> Maya is. 
<laughs> like I can't, every time I plan like, oh, I'm a film on this day or I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this at this time, it never works out. I'm always having to like squeeze it in. So for the most part, I've been doing my nail videos at night after she sleep. That is the time where I can sit and do the most. Because like I said, my husband, he does a lot on the back end. So he doesn't just sit on the couch and watch the kids. <laughs> like there's work that's being done in the back. Like y'all will find out, but <laughs> there's a lot that goes into this. So yes, I will be doing lives. It's just, everything is so crazy. I really want to wait until like everything's just settled out. Like, I don't, it's just always like this life. It's just always something. <laughs> Leah wants to know, will I ever consider going to nail school? No, <laughs> no. And that's just a personal choice for me. I don't see in my YouTube career, I don't need to do that because I'm, I'm not really focused on teaching. Like, yeah, I'm doing nails and I'm showing y'all what I'm doing, but I'm not teaching y'all proper, you know, vocabulary and technique. I don't know all that. This is just DIY, so. I don't have any need to go to nail school. <laughs> do you want to do other people's nails? No. I told y'all I worked in retail and I don't want to deal with the people. I don't want to deal with the public. <laughs> no. Ooh, somebody wants to know what my favorite food is. Um, I love salmon. I love salmon. I love pan seared salmon. I love grilled salmon. I just... I can eat salmon every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> That's how much I love salmon. I'm gonna use this uh, Perfect Red because I think that's that's like close to match with everything. So I'm just gonna dab a little bit out like so. I'm gonna try this trick that I saw. I don't know where I saw this. I think I saw it on Instagram. But they mixed a little bit of clear acrylic into the gel polish to thicken it up. Let's see. Let's stiffen this up just a little bit. Okay, I can already see that it's working. Ooh, I did it. Okay, so yeah, I'm just gonna put more lips. I don't think I'm gonna put no glitter on it because this glitter is so dark that I feel like it's going to really darken it. I wanna keep the brightness up, so yeah. That is the only reason why I'm not putting it on there. If I had a brighter red glitter, then I would definitely sugar these lips, but we are not gonna do it today. We are just gonna keep them regular. I'm done. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and cure that before I mess it up. Do you have a salon? No. <laughs> no salon. I don't even want those type of headaches, honestly. Uh Blakely wants to know how long does it take me to film and to edit? Well, for a typical video that's not this long, <laughs> it takes me probably about four hours, four to six hours to film my nails <laughs> and then it probably takes me another all together maybe like another eight hours to edit so this is a labor of love oh this is a good question what did you want to do growing up when i was little i wanted to be a fashion designer <laughs> <laughs> I was serious about it too. I had my little sketchbook and I would sketch out all of my designs. And when I got into high school, I I was in, um, I forgot what the actual name of the class was. Ooh, that's cute. But um, we put on a fashion show and we learned to sew clothes and oh my God, it was so much fun. And that is what I wanted to do but life had other plans. So yeah, um, I've always been into fashion and stuff, but I wanted to be a fashion designer when I was a kid. Oh my God, that is so pretty. <laughs> um, I was gonna leave these matte, but 
we're not gonna do that. We gonna juice these up. Oh yeah, okay. It looks so much better juicy. <laughs> but yeah, most of everyone kind of asks the same questions about, but I think that's because, you know, I don't really do these type of Q and A's. So most of y'all don't really know me all that well, unless you watch like every single video, which I know is kind of not, not feasible to do. So I don't mind answering the same questions because you know, it's new people coming in all the time. Oh, that's cute. All right, so I'm just gonna go in with some cuticle oil. Okay. One of my tricks is I, I take a microfiber cloth and wipe off the nails so they won't look greasy. And here is the finished look. Oh yeah, these turned out so cute. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed this Valentine's Day nail tutorial slash q and um, I had fun answering these questions. This was kind of different for me. I'm normally not this open. So I hope y'all enjoyed this. Um, it wasn't difficult for me to open up. It's just, I ain't the type of person to be telling all my business. So, <laughs> But I will talk to y'all in the next one. Peace. This is the outro to the Long Hair Pretty Nail Show, yeah.